Bill Ellis was a typical American, born and raised in the heartland to believe that hard work and perseverance would see him through. Bill left the Army Corps of Engineers and spent the rest of his life as a painter and sandblaster. He lived in Tennessee in the countryside he loved and raised a family there that now includes grandchildren and great-grandchildren he'll never know. Bill Ellis died of silicosis, a deadly, tragic disease, untreatable but preventable. Bill was born October 29th, 1936. He retired in January in 1999. He had a heart attack in March and he had uh, open heart surgery in October. So we were concentrating on the heart, didn't think anything about the lungs. In 2004 is when he had pneumonia three times in less than six months. So the doctor said something else was going on. Usually people who develop silicosis have been very healthy, vigorous people, and they find after years of the disease that they're short of breath, that they can't go very far, they can't walk very far, uh, they can't climb the stairs, they may even be short of breath just sitting still. Exposure to silica can be deadly. It can cause silicosis or lung cancer. It can cause chronic obstructive lung disease or kidney disease. Silica is one of Earth's most common minerals. It's found in stone, rock, brick, block, and mortar. When silica is released into the air, it can be deadly if inhaled. What we're looking at on the left is a normal lung. You can see that the lung tissue on either side of the heart is uh, dark and black, and that means it's full of air. And the x-ray on the right, you can see those white scars throughout the lungs on both sides. That's all scar tissue. It's from a patient with advanced silicosis. When you start showing signs and symptoms of silicosis, uh, taking a straw about the diameter of a dime and trying to draw air through that straw. And as time progresses, uh, shrink the diameter of the straw and uh, then put a bag over your head because you slowly suffocate. Gary Sassy knows the tragedy of this disease. Stone carving is the family business. His father and grandfather both died of silicosis. My dad, at 73, passed away, but was a very healthy man other than his lungs. And uh, it, it's a shame that that man had to pass away so soon. Many employers already use the common sense precautions that OSHA has included in this standard, but not all of them do. It's time for these precautions to be applied across the board to ensure that all employers learn from the best employers, apply common sense techniques to prevent exposure to silica and to save lives. Blow it out. Blow, 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 People are still dying of silicosis in the United States. Uh, the number of deaths has gone down over the years, but the sad part is that people are still dying of silicosis. Traditionally, on construction sites, silica with, with grinding and, and cutting produces a, a lot of dust. It gets into the workers' lungs, and you can protect them with a respirator one of the breakthroughs in our research trying to find a vacuum that was not only practical and did a good job was that we found that cyclonic vacuums, and that's a vacuum that has uh, a cylinder in it that creates a cyclonic effect where the dust drops down and doesn't have to go through the filter first. Once I tried the new things, it worked well because at the end of the day, I went home without silica dust in my lungs. I went home clean at the end of the day and I got used to it. It was just a matter of time and getting used to the equipment. We stir up a lot of dust, so we try to prevent as much of it getting in the air as possible. So we use these vacuums. But while we're working on the, cutting the joints out, we create a lot of dust, which we collect in the vacuums inside these bags. I'd much rather have it in this bag than I would inside my lungs or other people's lungs that may be walking by. To see somebody that can't breathe, uh, it's hard to describe actually, because you know they're going to die and really there's nothing you can say anymore. So, I don't know, it's hard to put it into words. 
Our belief is, is that the very best thing you can do to protect a company is to protect the workers who are, in effect, the heart and soul of that company. The two uh, go together. Uh, if we take care of the people who make things happen uh, and deliver the value to the customer, it takes care of the company. I believe that our industry here has worked hard to uh, bring in new technology that does help with the silicosis problem. I also believe that there's also room for more education for the workers themselves to understand the critical reasons why they have to be very careful in this industry. In today's climate, we stress to our customers safety, financial stability, company stability. We remind our men we want them to go home same shape or better shape than when they showed up at work that morning. If someone were to make the argument that it's, uh, it's too burdensome to uh, address silica exposure, uh, I would say that to be actively engaged in protecting the lives and the health of the individuals who are out there in the workplace and uh, allowing for a higher quality of life for them so they can play with their grandkids one day, it doesn't get any better than that. Okay, deep breath in and out. I started seeing patients with silicosis in the 1970s, in and, and I thought that that was the last generation of Americans who would die from silicosis. But I was wrong. I continue to see new cases of silicosis, and yet there is still no treatment. So I would like to see prevention of silicosis so that this disease is eliminated from our hospitals and our health clinics. OSHA estimates that once this standard goes into effect, it will save hundreds of lives it will prevent deaths from lung cancer, from silicosis, from kidney disease. Hundreds of lives, that's a statistic. But statistics are people with the tears washed off. It's grandparents who won't be able to celebrate birthdays with their grandkids. It's workers who will no longer be able to work productively. It's husbands and wives who won't be able to come home to their spouses. That's what this standard is about. It's about saving lives. After he passed, I was sent a janitor at the church where the cemetery is. I went up there every week, every single week, and would sit. And I could talk to him, but he couldn't talk back. So it's very sad to go. And I always keep flowers on there. Each, each season changes. Uh, this fall, I'll put fall. In winter, I'll put um, poinsettias on there. And the first two years, I put a Christmas tree on there. I work two jobs to make ends meet. I'm on Social Security, and of course, I have a pension from Bill. But still, it's very hard to make ends meet. And I think anything that can be done to help people safety-wise and health-wise should be done anywhere you work.